the breeze has picked up. You must have been up here in some filthy conditions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Four seasons in a day, Bob. <laughs> That's the mowers. I'll settle for two. If we can get away with two seasons today. <laughs> that would be great. Um, you're going to make us walk up this big hill. Ah, it's not that far, mate. <laughs> I've heard that before. Yeah. Is it one of those where horizons keep appearing? <laughs> 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 there. It's just at the top of that bit. We'll see. And then there's another bit. Uh, what is this? This up here is Danby Rig. Okay. Um, so we've got Danby Dale just on this side, and we've got the beautifully named Fry Up Dale on that side with the little Fry Up Dale. You're making me hungry. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all of that is a protein bar. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you with a Monster Munch. <laughs> I did have Monster Munch. Flaming hot as well. So, so this is, the rigs come into the Esk Valley like fingers, okay. so, and you've got the dales in between. Right. So we've got Castleton rig over here, Yeah. and then we've got Danby rig, and then yeah. we've got Glazedale rig, and then the Esk Valley down here. Okay, and the rigs, are, is that, I mean, is that an ancient word for a hill, I'm guessing? It is, yeah. Where's it come from? I think it's Scandinavian it, in It origin, probably is, isn't it, a, this part of the world? A rig, yeah. Yeah, got a lot of Scandinavian names and words around well, here. Well, Danby, village of the Danes. Yes! And okay. down in Kildale, yep. there were, there's been quite a lot of um, Anglo-Danish Viking sort of material excavated there okay. when, when, they, when they were extending the church and things yeah. like that. They found some little weights for weighing out metal right. and little bits of swords and stuff like yeah. that, you know. So, yeah. so this area was was um, populated by people coming over from Scandinavia in the early sort of medieval period. So, hence Danby, hence the, the, Danby a, a yeah. place that belongs to the Danes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it all sinks in <laughs> sooner or later. Sorry, I distracted you. So we're we're, we're so walking up here. We're going to follow a footpath up onto the top of the rig. Yeah which is known as the Old Wife's Way. Okay. And the Old Wife is a name that is generally associated on the mowers with prehistoric remains. So we're gonna walk up the Old Wife's Way to a very large standing stone set in a prehistoric burial cairn. Well, I'm game if you are. Yep, yep, let's go there. I'll saddle Megan up. <laughs> He's, he's not bothered about it. <laughs> he said, oh, you'll find better ones than that. I think this is really exciting. This is a, a piece of a prehistoric flint blade. It's been worked. He's just, he said, they, they wash out of the peat all the time. They're everywhere. I this is like a little piece of history, this. I feel like I'm, I feel a connection. I feel a connection to prehistoric man. Hang on, prehistoric man probably didn't have dog leads to contend with. So you've made us stop here, Gavin, and uh, I can fully understand why, because there's a rather beautiful stone here. What, what can we see? Put it in context. Interesting feature there in front of us is Freeborough Hill. Just peeping out of the horizon. Yeah, it comes up through a little notch and you only see that when you get to about this level of the rig. Yeah. If you couple that with the little shark spin, you can see over there at Rosebury Topping. Rosebury Topping. So as you get to this level of the rig, two landscape features appear, which coincides with on the rig here, the appearance of lots and lots of prehistoric cairns. And that can't be coincident, surely. Is that because they could see those two hills on the horizon, do you think? Perhaps they were significant. Yeah. The elephant in the room here yeah. is this. Yeah. I'm going to take somebody's left. I don't know if they, this feels like an offering, like some kind of ritual sacrifice, but somebody's left an apple. 
in the top of it. Uh, is it de rigueur to put these things back, Gavin? Well, somebody's left it there and it's biodegradable, so uh, yeah. I can't see any harm. <laughs> I don't want to anger any prehistoric oh, gods. Yeah. You might bring a, a, a curse down <laughs> on you. I'd be lurking. <laughs> so, what, what is this? This is a prehistoric standing stone and it's an absolute beauty. Isn't it? Um, it's quite unique to this part of the moors because it's built into a circular structure made of cobbles and rubble yeah. that has quite a circumference I can't remember the size of it I could walk it for you um, and it's from the Bronze Age okay. so it's a burial monument right um, our friend Canon Atkinson put a spade on this one and oh, he dug excavated up. this. He did, he, yeah. He, well, we say that he put a spade on it. <laughs> yeah. Is it more likely he supervised while he, other people put he spades? He supervised, on? yeah. And I believe he took some some urns, some pottery urns that contain cremations out of it. Okay. They also found flints and other other bits, but the cairn itself extends all the way around here, okay. all the way back to the footpath, and then comes back here. And it's not the only one on on the mower. There's a row of at least four of them running in a line yeah. across the rig. And are they all burial mounds? Yes. They are? Yes. So these, I mean, these are the burial mounds of somebody quite significant, you yes. would imagine then. Are these going to have been Bronze Age like, warriors? We don't know. We don't know. Um, behind you, you've got hundreds of tiny cairns. Um, there's, there's one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're difficult to see, but once you walk amongst them, you yeah. start getting your eye in, you'll pick them up everywhere. Small standing stones, uh, little alignments of stones, and tons and tons of cairns. So this is a, a place that was of some significance in prehistory. I mean, anywhere that's good to live now in the countryside was good to live then. It had yeah. good water, good well-drained land, um, access to decent farmland. Yeah. So the mowers probably, they might have run sheep or cattle up here, but probably, probably lived down in the <laughs> valley. And are we talking how many thousands of years ago here? Three, three, three to four. Um, but why I've brought you here really yeah. is to talk about the old wife and the old wife's way, okay. which is the name of this footpath. All oh, right, the one we've walked up. Yes, right. Yeah. I've done a lot of research into the old wife. It's become a bit of an obsession. And what I'm finding is that she's a supernatural figure who occurs in England, Scotland, Iceland, the Faroes, uh, northern Scandinavia, and then into northern Europe. You find these figures with the same attributes. Sometimes the names change. Um, as we move towards Scotland, she's called the Carling. As we move up into northern Scotland, into the Gallic areas, she's the Kayak. Right. But Kayak is, um, if you translate Kayak into English, it's old woman. Okay. Now we say old wife here, but wifen is an Anglo-Saxon word and it just means woman. Okay. If you think of a midwife or a fishwife, it doesn't mean she's married. It just means woman. So old wife is old woman. So as we move up through the British Isles, we see hills named after her, locks named after her, lots of coastal features. And we start picking up lots of folklore about her. She creates the landscape. She stands outside of the, the, the general mythologies of groups of gods, groups of kings and heroes. She's kind of outside of that. And we see a name change as we move into, into, in, into, into Europe. So in Scandinavia, she's still carling. She's still curling, carling, that kind of association. Yeah. But then we move into Europe and you get the more Slavic influences where she becomes Frau Hall or she becomes the Baba Yaga. Um, and the stories slightly change, but the kernel in there is still the old wife, the kayak. So she's a really important figure in the folk history of our islands and Northern Europe. Probably one of the only female supernatural figures who remains in our memory, in our landscape. Um, all of the others seem to have gone. You know, we just seem to have primary male figures, yeah. but the kayak, she's still there under everything. She, uh, the mythology says that she was there before everybody else. 
uh, and she peopled the world. She slept with kings, she slept with commoners, you know, she, she's just this powerful, powerful being in the landscape. Um, and I think it's a testament to the, to, to the knowledge of her that she's remained, the, 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 the sort of, the Christianization of the landscape, the removal of all these sort of dark figures in the Middle Ages um, seems to have skipped her. People have kept that memory, kept that name. Uh, we'll find her here. We find the old wife's well down there um, on the road to Pickering. There's some, some burial mounds that are named for the old wife. You know, she, she, she is all around us. <laughs>